Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Anna, aka Brooke Willow, and today I'm gonna show you how I fell back in love with some garments that I made that just weren't cutting it for me. You may or may not have been in my position before. When you first start to plan a project, you get so excited about it and then you envision it in your brain and then you go and make it and it just wasn't quite exactly what you wanted. In my case, that has happened quite a few times over the years that I've been knitting and sewing. And I still wear the garments that I make, even if I don't love them, but I put all this time and effort into making it. I want to love every single thing that I make, and I want to be excited to reach for it in my closet. So over the last few years, I've kind of had a pile of things that I either needed to fix or modify, growing and with Valentine's Day coming up I thought it would be nice to dedicate this week to falling back in love with those garments and giving them the love and attention they need. So every day this past week I took some time out of my normal knitting sewing, crafting, whatever, to just finally address these issues that I've been talking about for so long, even here on this channel. I've been talking about all these different things that I want to do to fix these things, but I just never get around to it because in my head, it just didn't really seem very exciting. But when all said and done, it did not really take very long for most of them. And the gratification I now have from it just makes it entirely worth just biting the bullet and doing it. Um, so yeah, let's just flow right into the first garment that I had modified. Today is the first day of this week that I am focusing on mending and modifying some makes that just make me very sad. <laughs> and uh, the first one that I'm gonna tackle today is probably my most upsetting knit. And that is the Yoko Top by Knitting for Olive. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you it here. If you're a regular viewer, you may already know all about this top, but if you're new here, this is a wrap style tank top that is knit horizontally instead of vertically. And there are these increases here that create each triangle, you know, to create a whole tank top. And then you make an I cord that wraps around the body and then you tie it in the back. I have a couple different issues with this tank top. The first main issue is the fit of it. It just opens right up in the chest area. And I even shortened the straps quite a bit. They are very short straps. And no matter how short I made the straps, the front just peels on open. And so my plan for that is to put in a little bit of elastic here so it'll kind of cinch it up instead of falling open. And it'll still have stretch to it instead of like just putting in a piece of string. So it'll feel comfortable, I think, on my chest. And the other issue that I have with it was actually, I think, something wrong in the pattern. It's set in the pattern to put wrong sides together and then do a Kitchener stitch to combine all of the stitches and seam them. So both pieces are live stitches and they meet in the back and then you Kitchener it all together. So when they said to put wrong sides together to Kitchener it, it actually shows the seam on the outside and not the inside. And I didn't even realize it until I was halfway through. And for some reason, I 
did not fix it. I don't know why, but that is something that I'm gonna go back and fix today. So what I'm gonna do is unpick the entire seam and catch the live stitches as I go, and then re-kitchener stitch all of it back together, holding the right sides together so it makes the seam a bit more invisible on the back. So to reference, this is showing on the outside, this very visible seam. And then on the inside, the seam is a lot cleaner and less visible. And this is what I want to have on the outside. If I'm gonna go through the trouble of making this a piece I love, I'm gonna do it right and fix all of the stuff that's going on with it. So here's a closer up look of the seam here and yeah, I'm going to be unpicking it. I'm not sure, I can't remember if I unpicked it or if I sewed it up from the bottom up or the top down. So I'm just going to take a look here. Yeah, it kind of looks like I move in the end right here. So yay, I found the end. Um, yeah. And now we are off. So I'm using two fixed needles in um, really small sizes so they just slip the live stitches slip onto the needles pretty easily it's proving to be a little bit difficult just because this yarn is 100% silk it's the pure silk from knitting for olive and so it's just slipping around on the needles quite a bit but I'm finding that if I hold the two needles in my left hand and then unpick with the darning needle and then just slip it on to each needle it's been pretty decent control for what I'm trying to do here but it's a little nerve-wracking I normally don't mind unpicking things or just kind of unraveling and then slipping the live edges on afterwards. I I never use lifelines when I knit. I know I probably should. I'd probably save myself a lot of headache if I did, but usually if I ever have to frog back right quite a bit, I I just unravel the whole thing and then I catch all the live stitches with the needles after the fact. But again, it's a lot easier to do with wool than it is to do with like a plant fiber because wool is just stickier yarn. It's easier for it to not unravel itself. I'm just gonna take my time, work my way down the back. I keep telling myself this is totally worth it. I put so much time into knitting this. As you can see, it's pretty tiny stitches I used very small needles to make this. I can't remember exactly what size at this moment, but I remember it being very small, like size three, maybe US three, or even smaller, maybe it was a US two, I don't know. But it took a while to knit this, so it's worth making it right instead of just never wearing the garment. All right, it took a lot of time. It was not fun at all. But now I have two separate pieces with live stitches on two different needles. And now, like I said, what I'm gonna do is hold the wrong sides together. No, I'm gonna hold the right sides together and Kitchener stitch the whole thing so we can hide that visible seam. And I know it's going to take probably just as long as it did to unpick it all, but again, it's worth it. If there was a lesson that I learned here, it is to always trust my intuition. And if something doesn't seem right, stop and assess and then maybe pick back. So I didn't have to do the whole thing. It would have been nice to just do maybe like a quarter of it, but whatever, we're here now and it's going to be good. Okay. Again, that took a very long time. We've completely lost sunlight, but I want to keep filming because I do want to get this project done with. But now we have a clean seam on the back side. I hope you can see this okay. 
Maybe I'll adjust my light here. Yeah, seamless back. It is puckering a little bit, as you can probably tell, but I'm sure with wear it'll stretch out a little bit or I can re-block it. No issue with that. Um, but now I am going to try to string the elastic through the front piece here. And it goes to show how long I've held off on actually doing this because I bought elastic thread last September. I remember because my friend was visiting and we went to Michael's together and yeah, and it's now February. So it's been quite a while since I had the intention of fixing this, but all that matters is I am finally getting around to it. So I'm going to grab that elastic and then see how I can thread it through this. So this is the elastic that I got. It's just like a very thin elastic like this. And I'm gonna try to attach it at the top of the triangle here and then run it through the inside all the way to the bottom here. So I think what I'll do first is thread a bit of it through the top corner. I'm going to make a little knot here, cut a decent length of it, thread it through the needle again, and then I'm just going to go down the interior of this using the needle here. I'm going to make sure that I'm not exposing any of the elastic on the front while I do this as well. Alright, so I have the elastic ran through this piece here. I'm going to take off my sweatshirt. I have a long sleeve tighter shirt on underneath this and try this on over it so I can see how much I want to tighten up the elastic and then I'll just tie it off and weave in the elastic ends and then do the same on the other side. Okay, so I have it on here. It may seem like it's staying up pretty well, but when I don't have a long sleeve shirt on, it just kind of falls open. I can already tell that the elastic is working very well on this side, and I barely even have it like scrunched up at all. But I'm just going to tug on it a little bit to kind of get it to a point where I like it. The nice thing is, is like, if it's not perfect, I can always tighten it more or re-put elastic through. It really it took me like five minutes, um, so it's not like a huge time commitment, but I think I like where I have it currently right now. And like I was saying with the elastic, I like it because it can still spring forward if need be, so it makes it comfortable to where there is a couple spots where I can maybe see the elastic coming through, but honestly at this point I don't really care. I'd rather just be able to wear it. So I like where it's at. I'm going to tie it off and then, like I said, weave in the ends. Okay, and it is all done and I've got to say it turned out exactly how I wanted it to. There are like super elastic ends here that just completely stay up while still you know having room to stretch out and yeah I would say this is a success and I am very excited to get to wear it this summer. This morning I have a sewn garment that I want to mend and it should be very simple yet very effective. This right here is the zero waste gather dress that I made quite a few years ago and it is one of my favorite pieces 
It's made out of a merchant and mills linen fabric and it has softened up so much over time, which I love. But the seam right here has come apart and it's been that way for over a year. And I've just had this little light bulb pin holding it together and it's prevented me from wearing this dress, which is silly because all it really takes is for me to sew over this seam again. Um, and I've been sitting down to sew so many times and I keep telling myself that I'll just add this to the queue when I'm making something, but I always end up forgetting. So I'm going to fix this hole here, but I'm also going to fix the interior. I noticed when I was looking at this that I never actually zigzag stitched the inside where the ruffle is. And this is when I first started sewing, so I probably just didn't know any better. But as you can see here, this is the interior where the skirt attaches to the bodice. It is just a frayed nightmare. <laughs> and I recently got a serger machine that I figured out how to use. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut off all of these big stringy frayed bits and serge around the inside of this bodice piece. And I might potentially do that to other bits. Like I can see right here that the interior pocket didn't get a zigzag stitch, so that's also fraying, and I think the side seams as well. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the insides all cleaned up and fix that little hole on the front, and hopefully this will make it very wearable again. I know it will. every single seam on the inside of this dress and oh my goodness what a difference that makes and it's so fun I absolutely love using the serger it just really cleans up everything on the inside but now I also know that I'm probably gonna have to make a lot less repairs to it because the seams are just very reinforced I wish I could better show you all of them but maybe you don't want to look at a bunch of interior seams but it is so clean inside this dress there are no more fraying ends and I have also since fixed the hole on the front and now I'm excited to regularly wear this dress again I'll hold up the fixed front for you here Take the sleeve, there we go. So good as noon. Again, this was such an easy fix, but very effective because I absolutely love wearing this dress and I really missed wearing it. I have to run off to work now, but I will see you in the morning again for another mend or modification. For today's garment, it's another knit item and it's a bit older too. You may recognize this as the Marseille sweater by Petite Knit. I think I knit this one three years ago and I love the colors of it. It's such a good fall time sweater. I tend to always end up bringing this on the yearly fall camping trip that we go on and yeah, it's held up pretty well. It certainly could use a good wash and probably like a glean as well, which I will 
do after I fix the issue, which is the sleeve length here. I don't know really what happened with it. I know I wasn't, let me preface this by saying they're way too long. <laughs> and I, I don't know if I wasn't paying attention or I wasn't really trying on as I went. I just trusted the pattern and bound off both sleeves and they could have grown in blocking too, but they go well past my hand. I'm not going to try it on, but it goes way over my hands and they just get in the way and I can't do anything. So I end up cuffing them up, but then you kind of see the inside color work here, which I don't love. Um, yeah, so it's a whole thing. So what I am going to do today is rip back the sleeves. I think I'm going to go back as long as the cuff is. I'm going to like rip back and then re-knit the cuff. So I think I'm going to eliminate this whole stripe. So it looks like I have four rows of stockinette after this stripe before I start the ribbing. And I think I'm going to rip back to being four rows of stockinette from this second stripe here. And then I'm going to start the ribbing. I think that's going to be super effective and make me reach for this a lot more. Uh, just because the sleeves are just going to look so much more sharp with this. So yeah, this one is probably going to take a few days to work on just because I am not going to be able to knit these cuffs in the hour that I have before I have to leave for work. But I'm going to start by ripping back, catching the knit stitches and begin the ribbing again. I got it all unraveled and the needles are back on. I'm gonna begin the twisted rib for the sleeves and I will check back with you in a few days to show you my progress with it. So it's been a couple days since I fixed these sleeves and they are all done and they fit exactly how I want them to. They still are pretty long, which is nice because the whole sweater itself is very oversized, but they just go right to the middle of my hand here so I can still use them, but keep my wrists nice and warm. I really, really love this whole sweater. And I also gave it a good shave as well. So I took off all of the pilling and it acts as a really good lint roller. So like it got all the dog hair off of it as well, which just seems to glue itself onto. And yeah, I feel like I have a fresh new sweater. This morning I will be modifying a pair of pants that I sewed last spring. These are the Aeronite pants by Sew so Liberated. I know it's a little hard to see them because uh, they're such a dark fabric, but love these pants. I like the material that I used for them. They're like a linen blend and they're super drapey and comfy to wear year round. But the only issue that I have with them is the pockets on the side. I like the idea of these pockets. They're like a very cool design feature, but it could just be the fabric or something. They tend to stick out really far on the sides, creating like a swoop out effect. And if I'm being honest, they just kind of make my hips look weird and a shape that they normally aren't. So I've talked about this on 
videos from I think last summer and I had a lot of great suggestions on how to like solve this problem that I have and someone suggested putting elastic in the pocket and that way you can still like open it up and cinch it if needed and yeah so it'll hold it in but I can still have access to it so that's what I'm going to do um I don't like fully know how I'm going to execute this quite yet. I think I'm going to insert the elastic from the inside if I can and feed it in through and then up to the other side. And I'm going to have to secure it at the tops of both pockets so it doesn't like fall down the pocket. So I'm going to use this thin elastic and then I have a little darning needle here and we're just gonna kind of wing this one and see how it goes. Okay, you're not gonna be able to see my face just because of the camera angle, but here is the after and the side pockets. Hopefully you can see with this dark fabric okay, but I love how it fits. Before they used to poke out to like here and it just looked like goofy clown pants but now it's smooth all the way down and very easy to access the pockets here. And I just secured the elastic by tying two little knots on the inside of the pants. No one else will see it but me. And yeah, I really love how these turned out. And it only took less than 10 minutes for this very effective modification that I made. For my final act, or should I say modification, I am finally addressing the pretzel buttons <laughs> on this vest. This vest I made last year, it's the Texture Vest by Helga Isayer, and I absolutely love it. The colors and the texture of it are beautiful, and I was really excited about using a toggle style button. This isn't really even a button that I first was envisioning making this with. I think I chose these more out of convenience than anything. I was at my local yarn shop and they had a big bowl of these handmade wooden buttons. And at first I liked them. I didn't really like how rectangular they were. I wanted it to be more of a tapered toggle with a point on one end. So they do seem kind of clunky to me and they do make the garment a little more rustic than I want it to be. I want it to be a, just like a little bit more designer looking, I guess. But then it, <laughs> what really sealed the deal was when my friend mentioned they look like pretzels. And now that's the only thing I see. So it was time to finally order the new buttons. And that's what I did. I went on Etsy. I honestly, I can't even remember which shop I got these from, but it was a huge button supplier. And it's these really dark, like I would say almost black, super dark brown horned toggle buttons. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace them on here right now. I think it's going to be super simple. I remember these are really easy to sew on when I did it last and they won't be super hard to remove. So, yep, I'm going to get started on that.
have it. That only took me like 10 minutes and I am in love with how these buttons look. They stand out so much better than these other buttons because obviously they're just a higher contrast to the color of yarn that I used, but the button itself is just very edgy and striking with its like more severe point. And yeah, it just, the garment looks more interesting to me now with this. And I feel like, yeah, I'm really excited to wear this. I could just ramble on about it. I also know that I'll definitely be able to reuse these wooden buttons for future projects. I actually think they would make cute little enclosures at the top of like a market bag or something to like close a bag. And yeah, so I'm obviously going to hold on to these because I can reuse them again in the future. Well, there you have it. I feel like I just got five new garments into my wardrobe and I didn't even have to buy them or make them. I just made these fixes and modifications and it just gives me a whole new perspective on these pieces that I have. And I do have to say, I think I am back in love with them. And you may have noticed that I even already started wearing them throughout this week because I was just so excited to have these pieces look exactly how I originally envisioned them to. I encourage you to maybe take 15 minutes out of your day to finally work on those little fixes that maybe you've been putting off for some time because the reward that comes out of just taking a little time is excellent and yeah, I think they deserve to get the love that they need. I really hope you enjoyed this style of video. I certainly had fun with it too. It kind of motivated me to finally work on these pieces. If you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up. That really does help my channel out a lot. And if you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing and you won't miss out on any future content. Until next time, I hope you have a good week and yeah, see ya.